Good morning, everybody. It is 9 a.m. and my name is Gareth Soloway from VerifiedInvesting.com and welcome to the game plan. So here we are again. We have some data out this morning. I want to jump right into it. So we're going to jump over here and take a look. We got the PCE data this morning and you can see this headline and I want to kind of draw the comparison here with the headline, right? So Fed's preferred price gauge ticked higher as inflation fight gets tougher. So this is kind of what I've been talking about. Now, we've talked about how inflation was trading or at 9% and bringing it down to around 3% or so is the easy battle. Three to two is the tough battle. And I'll go on record right now predicting that there will be a point in 2024 when we're still around 3% inflation and the Fed still starts to lower interest rates. There's gonna be a new normal. The Fed has said 2% is what they want they'll eventually adjust that to 3% inflation because it's going to be nearly impossible to get the cat back in the bag and get inflation at 2%. Now, when we look at this, it makes it sound like the PCE data was horrendous this morning. Yet the S&P market, the S&P futures are actually positive. Now, they haven't really gone anywhere since the data was released this morning, but I want to jump over to this chart over here or this these data points. Now, here's the data points that were released today, and I want to show you why the markets are not really freaking out that inflation, the inflation fight is getting tougher. And we're going to go first to jobless claims. So we have jobless claims here, right? And oh, I apologize there. We'll get that back right there. So we have jobless claims right here. And the key on this, folks, is that you could see that today jobless claims came in at 228,000. And that was actually down 4,000 from last week. So week over week. And so interestingly enough, and we're going to get to the inflation numbers in a second. They're right down here. But the jobless claims, again, this is people filing for unemployment. They actually came down. Now, remember, we saw the jolts numbers earlier this week that the market really loved because the jolts numbers was people or job openings. And job openings declined dramatically. But we're not seeing the labor market weaken per jobless claims just yet. So I think that's interesting to take note of. All right, so next up, let's take the next point here. And I want to go into the next factor. And the next factor was the core PCE data. Now, the core PCE data came in at 0.2% month over month, but this is the kicker, all right? Right here, what was the estimate? The estimate was 0.2%. And so even though we're generally seeing inflation being tougher to bring down, the market already knew that going into the data. So again, because this is equal to this, the markets aren't freaking out about it. Essentially, it came in at expectations. Going to the 12-month PCE, which is year over year, 4.2%. Expert, experts had expected 4.2%. So right on alignment there. Lastly, we have personal income. Personal income did decline a little, which is a small positive. If Now, well, listen, that's not fair. Personal income in general, you and me, we want people to make more money. The Federal Reserve does not. The reason they don't want people to make more money is because it causes inflation to go up. All right, so they like the fact that it came in at 0.2% versus estimates of 0.3. It's, it's a very minor thing, but that is a small positive. The other side of the coin is a small negative. So this was a small positive. This one, personal spending, is a small negative because personal spending dropped. And that tells you that the consumer and expectations were 0.7% and it came in at 0.6%. And that tells you that consumers are pulling back just a hair on their spending habits. So overall, this one's a negative. This is a positive here. And then these came in basically in alignment. These were equal. And so again, what we saw with the stock market when we're looking at the S&P futures, the S&P futures essentially are not moving much. They were up going into this number. They're still up going into this number. We'll see where we are later today. I do want to talk about some charts. So we're going to jump back over here, folks, and take a look at these charts. Um, so we're going to go into a couple charts here. Number one, I want to walk you guys through what I look for. So as soon as this data comes out, I want to take you guys through my process. So what do I do in the morning when we get economic data? The first thing I look at is the dollar. Okay, now the dollar is important because the markets, we know in general, they want a weaker dollar. And we saw that here with the last three days, the dollar's coming down. Now we are seeing the dollar strengthen a little bit today. 
So the dollar is beginning to move back up. Now, after three down days in a row, you could argue that, okay, it was a little oversold. Maybe it's due for a little bit of a bounce, but this is actually a pretty decent bounce here. So I wanna watch this today because if the dollar continues to stay strong, does the S&P 500, does the NASDAQ begin to reverse the upside that we're seeing, which is very minor this morning, but do we start to come in to the downside? So that's something I'm watching very closely. Now on a technical basis here, on a technical basis, the only thing you care about with the dollar in terms of breakout or breakdown, we know that, see this, this area right here, okay? There's all these little, little tails right against here, and that's right where this low has been. So this is short-term support at around 103.10, right here if we draw that out. And then resistance remains right up here. We have the upsloping trend line. So if the dollar continues up, this is the level you wanna watch that's gonna be very influential. I would generally say anything in between this area is not a huge deal to the market. The market doesn't like new things. So the market would get scared if we break out on the dollar. And on the other side, if we break down in the short term, the markets would like that quite a bit. All right, let's continue on. So that's my first thing. The first thing I do after I see economic news in the morning, and I'm giving you guys my play-by-play -play of how I look at this stuff. So the first thing I do is I look at the numbers. And the important thing is to look at the data after the charts because you don't necessarily know how the data, like, so I'm looking at the data, I'm interpreting it, but you don't know if you're right in your interpretation until you go to the charts, all right? So the dollar going higher a little bit today tells me that the markets are saying, okay, we really had a big rally uh, and a drop in the dollar, right? The markets rallied up, the dollar dropped because of the jolts number, but the jobless claims number is not so, not so bad. In fact, the jobless claims is telling us that the jobs market's not weakening here. Now, remember, we have the non-farm payrolls tomorrow. That is going to be insanely important. All right, but in any case, basically the dollar moving up is telling you that people are saying, wait a minute, maybe things aren't quite as weak as we thought, right? All right, the next thing I do is I go to the 10-year yield. We flip over to the 10-year yield. We want to see what the 10-year yield is doing. And what we could see here on the daily chart, the 10-year yield's barely moving. So again, this is telling us, and the 10-year yield is important to watch because it gives us a basis for what the Fed, what the markets believe the Federal Reserve will do. Now, the fact that the dollar's moving up tells you that people are saying, okay, the market, the economy is maybe a little bit stronger than after with the jolts number we were thinking, but the fact that, that interest rates are right where they were essentially yesterday is telling you that the markets still don't believe the Fed will hike the rest of the year. Last week, we were in a camp, and, and this is for Fed Funds Futures, we were all in the camp where it was looking like a November rate hike following Jerome Powell's uh, Jackson Hole comments. Now, because of the sell-off, you're now pricing in essentially, this action is telling you the economic data today is not swaying the Fed's hand, or at least markets interpretation of the Fed's hand towards a rate hike. If it was, if a rate hike, if this news was really, let's say inflationary, then you'd see yields surging dramatically back to the upside. We're not seeing that. So the markets again are telling us there's no change from yesterday in terms of what the markets expect from the Fed. All right, so that's where we go. And then ultimately what I do is once I look at those, I look at obviously gold, but we'll go to the S&P 500. The S&P 500, let's go to the 10 minute chart here. The S&P 500 is actually starting to roll over. So we saw the stronger dollar. Now the S&P is starting to roll over here. This is pre-market, by the way. So this is, again, pre-market, pre-market. We started to rally into the PCE data. We popped initially, and then we're now starting to sell off. We're still net positive on the day. So here's where we basically closed yesterday, right in here, okay? But again, we are coming back in. You can see very clearly here, the S&P is coming back in. All right, so that gives us a basis. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna go over some charts. So let's talk a little bit about the S&P, the spiders on the daily chart. Let's see what we got here. So if we go to your daily chart, one of the key lines that I've been watching, and this is the, this is the S&P, right? We were having this beautiful, and let's go over this chart. So remember this candle, guys, this one right here gapped up at the highest point that was a 52 week high and then it reversed and closed down here notice it's an it's a reversal engulfing candle all right a reversal engulfing candle must open above the prior levels above any of the prior candle highs and close below and that's what it did right 
So that is a big top in technical analysis until proven otherwise. Now, proven otherwise, any daily close above that high and it's negated. So far, we haven't done that. That began the sell-off that took us down here. We've now rallied strongly back to the upside, but the question is, where are we coming to? And here, if we look at the chart going into today, I thought this was interesting. In fact, I pointed this out in my daily analysis video yesterday, but what we could see here is these little lows, we were right up into the point of interest. So here's a trend line. Take a look at this, right? So basically, we have these lows, all these lows along here, okay, right in here, and we're right back to that. So it does tell us that the S&P is close to short-term resistance. Now, if resistance is broken, there's a gap fill right here. That would be your next target, and then the, the attacking of the gap, the reversal engulfing candle would be your next point. But right now, today, we are into resistance on the S&P. We are short-term overbought. I mean, if you look at this low here, it was basically at 433. We're at 451. That's a big four-day move in the S&P 500, in all fairness. So I would not be surprised if we have a little bit of a check back today, just a little bit of a pullback overall. Um, I'm also looking at a chart like Apple. Apple's had a tremendous move. Now, remember, Apple has seen, okay, Apple has seen a, a slowing of revenue. But look at the fall on Apple and look at the size of the bounce here. Now, this is incredible, and I'll tell you why. So number one, I think on September 12th, Apple's going to unveil like some new iPhone design or some new iPhone. So I think this is partly why it's run up because this news just hit. But I will say this, I think Apple's kind of coming into a short level here. Same kind of thought process, right? We have this area right here, which is huge. You have the gap fill right here. And then you also have this area right over here which gives us this area. Again, this pivot low, you're into this pivot high, which is a gap window, and we're in here. So your two resistance levels, number one, I expect a little check back like this, and then probably a move up into this gap fill. But I think again, short-term overbought, you're looking at a pullback on Apple here in the near term. All right, so we'll see what the futures do today. I'm just giving you what the technicals are telling me. And again, I don't know if after it pulls back, if it'll go up and fill the gap. I'm just assuming gaps in general on charts are made to be filled. All right, so let's talk about another chart that I like here. This is a chart that was just brought to my attention by uh, my film guy, actually. Thank you, Canyon Buddy. Um, so take a look at this chart. This is Celsius. Now, if you're like me, you've had a Celsius or two in your life. I know people around here who drink them like, like they're popping mints in their mouth. But let's talk a little bit about this chart. So first thing I see, I was like, holy cow, this thing is, has had a monster run. And now I'm on the weekly chart. If we go to the daily chart, this is how the daily chart looks. But for me as a technician, I'm going to walk you through what I do. So I look at this chart on the daily chart and I say, okay, it looks overbought. The stock was $70 down here. It's now $194. That seems to me to be overbought. Seems doesn't matter. Take your seams and throw it in the trash technicals are the only way you get an edge in this game. Now, what I did next was I went to my weekly chart and I said, oh, wow, look at the weekly, man. This is pretty impressive here. So if we go to our weekly and I said, you know what? Look at this high. Look at this high. What if we connect to these two highs? Do we get any sort of trend line? So let's do it right now. And all of a sudden, look at what shows up. So here you have this beautiful trend line right here, right here, and look at price up here. Now, in all fairness, do I think it's at 194? Could it go? It looks like it could go up a tiny bit more. My guess is it's probably going to touch the 200 level. But in the scheme of trading, a trend line that goes back to 2021 and connects through every pivot high. This was a pivot high. Pivot highs. Let's talk pivot highs. What's a pivot high? Up, down. That's a pivot high. When you have a significant move up and a significant pullback, that creates a pivot high. Here, up, down, pivot high. Up, down, pivot high. The thought process is, and this is just the laws of deduction, right? Logic. Logic is what you want to do here, is that if it hit this line and had a pullback, and it hit this line and had a pullback, if A plus B plus, you know, et cetera, then what do you expect? Something like that. So I'm just throwing that out there that, again, to me, and again, listen, there's no guarantees. There's no free lunch in this game. I've had trades that look like this that have been losses. So just be aware of that. But it's all probability-based. You find a trend line like this, approximately, I would say, 7 out of 10 times, 
you're going to get the retrace back down here. So very cool on that chart. I thought that was a really cool chart there to take a look at. All right, so let's go over here and let's jump over to this screen and I'm gonna go to a couple things here. Let's erase these lines from our previous data discussion and let's go into a few different things. So if we go to our QQQ chart, and this is gonna be interesting guys, is that the Qs are currently, again, in this retrace mode, right? So we're in this channel. We have a channel here. You can see the channel. If I zoom out, you can see it even better here, right? So here's your channel. Now, what we've seen recently is the top of the channel hit, and I'm going to zoom in even a little bit more so we get a better sense of this, and we've pulled back to this trend line. And again, the trend line is key. Now, number one, we have to remember that buy the dippers are ingrained. All right, we've seen NVIDIA move back close to its highs, right? It's almost back to $500 a share. Um, there's so much bullish sentiment. Buyers, because of the Federal Reserve's constant monetary easing policy until this latest cycle, they've been constantly saying every, every dip is a buying opportunity. Well, we just had a dip, so the, the buy the dippers are going to come in. Notice psychologically, and this is amazing in terms of technicals, technicals are all about psychology. And the psychology of the chart told us that, okay, somehow human nature is going to be buying off of these lines, right? So we see very clearly and look at where the buy came in. Now the question, and this is going to be a big test for the NASDAQ, is that here's a top. Here's our recent top. Do we come up and take out this level here and take out this area? Or is this going to be something where we go like this? And again, for me, I'm in the camp that the markets probably roll over. But I will say this, is that I've been wrong before, and this market is powerful. There's no doubt about it. When you see the trillion dollar names controlling the outcome of the market, and I'm dead serious here, I've showed you guys the Russell chart compared to the NASDAQ 100 chart. There's no doubt that the, this Magnificent Seven are controlling the outcome of this market, is that if those stocks can somehow keep powering higher, then the, the markets are going to go higher. All right. Now, if those stocks stall out, that's a different story. But this is really what we're watching now. You're watching this double top, this trend line here. Are we going to go up here and test it and break out? Or are we going to start to roll over? And then this line right here, that's what you're watching for on the charts. Does that get taken out? Um, speaking of NVIDIA, let's go into the NVIDIA chart right now here, folks because I do think it's worth kind of paying attention to here, because I, I honestly think NVIDIA has now become the new Apple. It used to be Apple was the big player, like people bought stocks if Apple was up, they sold if Apple was down. I think NVIDIA's taken that hype place. It's all about NVIDIA here. On NVIDIA, we have a very clear channel, right? Very clear channel on the chart, and we have these lows here, go all the way through here, here, and here, and now we have high, high, and high. All right, so the question is, here's your double top high. We kind of kissed it yesterday, but if we get up here, that's going to be your big test. That's right around the aftermarket highs from earnings on NVIDIA around 515 to 530. All right, I do want to go over a couple crypto charts, but before we do that, we're going to go over silver here. Let's take a look at the silver chart. The silver chart to me is interesting, but the big thing on silver for me is watching this longer term trend line, right? So if we go to silver, here's your silver chart we can very clearly see this is a longer term trend line. All right, so as a technician, if you're someone who's a big bull on silver, all you're gonna care about right now is this line here, right? Oh, bear with me as I lost my drawing tool here. Okay, so essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch this level, this level, this level, and then it hit here. Price is getting close to that level. If we can break out, you should go test this high at around $30 per ounce. Now, eventually, do I think silver is going to break out and go much, much higher? Yes, just like gold. I'm a big believer. Silver, again, could be influenced a little bit more so with industrial metal action, uh, meaning the economy. But either way, if you're in the camp that I am, that inflation is going to remain slightly elevated for longer, then again, inflation in metals will be a positive. And by the way, this is going to be something to watch. If people, now people are talking about that the dollar's gonna go down, and I agree with this, and this is gonna be an interesting little concept. Let's go back to the DXY chart here. All right, so here's your DXY chart. Now, in terms of the dollar, 
let's talk bigger picture. Let's go to our monthly chart. So if we go to our monthly chart on the dollar, here it is, what we can see, and these are these two smaller trend lines over here, but we can see that we have this pivot top going back to 2002, and we've now have this level here. So the first thing in terms of drawing trend lines, I always put my trend lines in first, right? And so basically I would take that high and draw it down to the secondary high that we made uh, in basically a year ago or so right here. So this is your new trend line to watch here. Now, a lot of people are telling you, and I actually agree with this, that over the next 10 years, the dollar will essentially start to lose its reserve currency status and degrade, partially because, I mean, in all fairness, a lot because of money printing as well as the U.S. national debt. This is going to be the tricky thing, folks, and this is what's going to screw a lot of people and create a very tough stock market picture, right? So if we look at this and we see, and let's just say the dollar trends lower, right? The dollar trends lower over time, whether it goes here, whether it goes here, a dollar that's declining means that asset prices, mainly commodities, are going to have to go higher. If commodity prices go higher, that's inflationary. It's another reason why I believe that over the next 10 years, inflation is not going back to 2%. It's probably going to stay around 3 plus percent going forward. Because if the dollar declines, then we know commodities are going to go up. By the way, take a look at the o o orange juice futures market right now. Orange juice is like this. I mean, it's an incredible move on orange juice. You can pull that chart up. I don't think they have that. I, I don't know. Actually, let me see if they have that on trading view, but it is an insane chart here on orange juice. All right. Uh, let me just take a look here and see if we have a, hey, we do. Let's see if it shows here. Oh yeah. Look at this guys. Look at orange juice. I was actually looking for an ETF to short this. Uh, I couldn't find one though, unfortunately, but look at the move in orange juice here. I mean, this literally is up 200% since 2021 lows. All right, that is a, a remarkable move to the upside. And by the way, I, I'm not a big person that buys orange juice at the store, but if you are, I'm sure you've noticed the cost of orange juice has gone skyrocketing to the upside. All right, so that's a couple charts. There was a chart there. I just want to go over a couple crypto charts here real quick. If we look at Bitcoin, there's not a whole lot new today. We're still retracing. The question again for me when I look at this chart on Bitcoin is, are we making a bull flag, which would be bullish for a move up here to 28.5 to 29,000? Or are we going to retrace down here, which would be then bearish? So as a technician, I let the charts tell me. And the charts, again, it's too preliminary to know. But if we stay inside here, this would be bullish. If we start breaking lower, that would be bearish. And it's all about the formation. By looking at formations in charts, you know that in history, a thousand, a million of these formations, seven out of 10, eight out of 10 of these, or 800 out of a thousand, whatever it may be, they work out in this direction. And that's what technical analysis is. All right. So here we are, guys. Again, it's been another classic game plan. And I thank you for tuning in so, 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 so much. It means the world to me. Please share this with your friends and family. My goal is to make this the most watched morning investment show in the world. Online, wherever, I don't care. You guys are the best. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Take care.